So on the table in front of me here I have the neck blank and uh, off camera what I've done is with my hand plane I've uh, leveled out the, the surface for the fretboard as well as the headstock and uh, marked out where the nut is going to be also uh, 14 fret location uh, just as a reference point for the fretboard and so the next step now is to cut the channels for the neck reinforcement for the two-way truss rod and uh, this guitar will also get some carbon fiber reinforcement on either side of the truss rod so I'm going to go over to the router table and uh, route those slots So I'm done uh, slotting the, the neck blank here. You can see the middle slot will be for the truss rod. The slot on either side is for the carbon fiber. And I have my carbon fiber strips here, which I am ready to glue in. And in order to, uh, to glue these in, I am using uh, Gorilla Glue, which is uh, a name brand of uh, a type of polyurethane glue. And it, it's a, one of the more modern high-tech glues uh, would not recommend it for most instrument making operations but what it's good for is gluing uh, gluing different materials that would traditionally not be glued together so I've uh, used this to glue wood onto metal uh, for some fixtures onto my some of my metal sanders and uh, it's one of the few glues which will stick to uh, material like carbon fiber. And uh, normally on a, a regular solid head or solid peg head guitar, I would run the carbon fiber right into the headstock. But the LG model uh, is uh, built standard with a slotted headstock. And so that's what this guitar is getting as well. Uh, there's a lot of debate around the issue of neck reinforcement. Um, some people may be wondering, or maybe you're wondering why, why carbon fiber if it's getting a two-way truss rod, and uh, you know the, there's a, a good argument to be made that a, a two-way truss rod will add plenty of strength. The majority on the, of guitars on the market nowadays uh, just have a one-way truss rod. Uh, the factory guitars, some of them have two-way truss rods, and uh, then you get uh, another another uh, opinion which is that uh, you don't need the truss rod at all just use a lot of carbon fiber uh, like Paul Reed Smith does with their acoustics they use a big big chunk of carbon fiber down the middle of the rod or riddle, middle of the neck basically ensuring that the neck will never move uh, but it also means that the neck is not adjustable so I found this combination works really well um, the carbon fiber adds some a little bit of stiffness, uh, extra layer of stability against uh, twisting, that's never been an issue with my guitars, and uh, it doesn't add any weight, and it still allows for easy adjustment with the truss rod, and uh, so to me it seems like uh, certainly a, a no-lose situation. You gain a little bit of stiffness, you still get the adjustment of a, a traditional truss rod. Uh, one thing you'll see me doing here is a I've got some water on my, my cloth and uh, the polyurethane glue is actually activated uh, by water and one of the neat things about this glue is that it will expand to fill in any gaps or voids if, if there are any uh, but it's also one of the reasons you got to be very careful with this glue because uh, if you use too much glue it will expand all over the place and once it sticks to something uh, it's a, a real mess to, uh, to get off, so I, I do not recommend uh, using it uh, for, for instrument work, except in cases like this, or, uh, you know, one or two extreme repair cases I've used it as well. So what you see me doing here is I've, uh, I've, I've glued the carbon fiber strips now I've got a couple mahogany strips which I'm laying over top of the carbon fiber. 
and I'm just trying to... The carbon fiber is set just below the surface of the neck and what I'm aiming for is that once, once this is all dry, I will level out um, these, these strips of mahogany which will leave me with the carbon fiber and a very, very shallow strip of mahogany uh, to cover the carbon fiber channels. So I've still, uh, so I don't lose any gluing surface um, for my fretboard. And I will also cover the truss rod uh, in the same way with a very thin, uh, thin strip of mahogany. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this up. I'll uh, leave it clamped for a couple hours, come back, and uh, level out those mahogany strips. And uh, then I'll either be uh, cutting a dovetail um, or gluing some veneer on the headstock. We'll uh, see how things go. Okay, so in the last clip I had uh, I'd glued in the carbon fiber. Uh, I put these uh, filler strips on the top. And now that the filler strips are leveled, there's just a very, very thin a uh, piece of wood now covering up the carbon fiber uh, so that I still have the gluing surface for my fretboard. And uh, the final stage that I'm going to show for the neck in this video clip is gluing on the head plate. I have my uh, Zuricotti head plate here and uh, just a, a couple uh, metal pins, uh, reference pins uh, drilled in the headstock. So uh, just need to apply some glue, line everything up, and clamp it down. Uh, so that's, uh, that's going to cover the neck up to this point. Uh, after this uh, comes the, the dovetail neck joint. I'll dedicate a video clip to that and then a, a video clip as well to the, uh, the routing of the headstock shape. And uh, after that will come the, the fretboard and then the carving of the neck. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you go through my YouTube channel, you can go back and watch the other videos in the Building a House Guitars video series. And uh, stay tuned because there will be more clips coming shortly. Thanks for watching.